Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called $100 for a great revenge. I've been a computer technician for more than 15 years now. In that time I've worked on all kinds of computers. Everything from tiny point of sale computers to large rack servers. Five years ago I had been attending a new to me church. I was trying to date a woman there and this church was her idea. That relationship crashed and burned, but that's a different story. I just said through a long sermon about generosity and giving to those that need help. At the end of the sermon, the pastor, Bob, asked for an additional donation because the church's roof needed repairs. And it would cost around 20,000 US dollars. After the service, I'm talking to my date and the pastor walks over to us. We introduced ourselves and talked for a bit. He started to ask me what I do for a living and I tell him that I have a computer tech shop. As I'm telling him this, I got a feeling that he already knew what I do. He asked me if I could have a look at his laptop as it was very slow. I agree. I turn the laptop on and I hear a clicking noise, probably the hard drive. But I can still access the data. This is a good thing because it means I can probably recover the data. So I tell Pastor Bob that the hard drive needs to be replaced, but that I can probably recover the data. How much would it cost to fix it? For most people I would charge $250, however I feel I can donate my time. So I would just need $60 for a new hard drive. He agrees, so I write up an invoice, which he signed. New hard drive $60, labor $0, data recovery $0 and 2-4 to four days for repair. Thus I take the laptop to my shop and open the bag so that I can get the hard drive out. With that done, I connect it to my recovery rig and set up the recovery to clone the data to a new hard drive. But not the new one for the laptop. A high-end storage drive. I go home after locking up the shop. The next day, Monday, I open the shop and check the recovery rig. It's working, but it will take at least 10 more hours. So I start work on the other tickets. Then at closing time, I lock up and go home. On Tuesday, I've had Pastor Bob's laptop for two days. I open the shop and check my recovery rig. Good news, the recovery is completed and 100% of the data is recovered. The report says that the hard drive developed too many bad sectors. Now I have a choice to make. I could put a 1TB hard drive or a 120GB SSD in it. It's both are around $60 or I could pay some money myself for a 240GB SSD. I decided why not and put the 240GB SSD for $100 in the laptop. I then clone all the data over from the new recovery storage drive to the new drive. An hour later the clone is done. So I check everything. The laptop works great and is exactly like how it was before the first hard drive died. Even the login still worked. Therefore, I call Pastor Bob and tell him his computer is done. He says, that's great, he will be here soon to get it. About 45 minutes later, he walks in. I show him his laptop rocking and much faster. He loves it, signs the pickup form and then pays me with a check for $60. I do a bank run on Monday and Friday. And that Friday at the bank, I was informed that Pastor Bob's check is void. He had placed a stop payment on the check. Consequently, I called him, but he ignored my call. On Sunday, I go to the church again. He gives a sermon about not lying. I walk up to talk to him, but he avoids me. So I leave and decide I'm going to write it off. I spent $100 and some time to do something nice. That would be it, but a few weeks later a customer walks in, looking for a new computer. To welcome him, I offer him a drink and go over his options. I'm chatting him up and he tells me he is a contractor and mostly does siding and roofing. And he is thinking about offering solar, that's why he is getting a new computer. I asked how much a new roof would cost and he says up to $10,000, so I asked him why would someone say $20,000. He had no idea. I thought it was strange. I asked about the church. The contractor said it would have been simple and around $5,000 and he could probably do it for less. In the end, he buys a nice new laptop and gives me an idea for my revenge. Something about what the contractor said bugged me later. Why would the pastor lie and say that he needs $20,000 for a new roof? And why would he stiff me for $60?
I then remember I never cleared the recovery rig storage drive. I check and there it is, his complete laptop data. I look around, it's slow and I'm all caught up on repair tickets. Fittingly, I look around a bit. He had all his logins stored in a folder on the desktop, including his online dating logins and online poker. Did I ever mention Pastor Bob is married? I start printing his online dating messages. I look through them and find that Pastor Bob had been adult hugging several women from his online dating. He had been paying for his dates from the church's donation fund. At this point I was getting angry. Then I realized that he had also adult hugged the woman I was dating when I was dating her. It was then that I decided to break Pastor Bob. I printed out all his dating messages and the woman he adult hugged for the last 6 months. But I refused to print the naughty pictures. It was an impressive packet. I then decided that I need copies of the packet. Therefore I ordered 100 packets printed from a major online printer. A few days later my order of revenge packets arrived. These revenge packets are amazing. Double sided, staple bound with a cover of Pastor Bob's face on it. Now the conclusion and I think it's worth it. This church had a calendar of what the sermon might be about and a perfect Sunday was approaching. I go to the church that perfect Sunday. I show up a bit late and everyone is already in the church. So I put a revenge packet on each car. I also have a few revenge packets that are in yellow envelopes. I put them in the mail and send one each to all the high ups in the church. And I send a special packet with some of Pastor Bob's naughty pics to Pastor Bob's wife. I set the return address to the church. I also emailed a bunch of people the revenge packet from a burner email. A couple of weeks later I went back to the church. Pastor Bob was gone, so was the wife. Several of the women were also gone, including the one I was dating. I asked one of the important people there about what happened and the answer was amazing. I was told about the revenge packet and how everyone had gotten one. The day my revenge packet appeared, the sermon Pastor Bob had given was about the evils of adultery and cheating on your wife. Thank you, church calendar. Pastor Bob was fired and shunned. Multiple women from the church have not returned, including the one I was dating. Pastor Bob's wife is divorcing him. And she is the one that owns the house and cars. No longer Pastor Bob is now being sued by several people, including the one that fixed the roof as he never paid any of them. There were also rumors of a criminal case for embezzlement. No one has seen Bob in a while. The church might close if they can't find a new pastor. But the church's money is very low. Apparently he also spent over $30,000 on online gambling. The next story is called Tree Revenge. We live in an old and big manor that has been split into three attached houses. The houses are about 150 years old and were built around five huge giant sequoias which were about 200 years old. In the UK giant sequoias are very rare and the two in our garden up the house price by about 60,000 pounds. We lived next to two really nice neighbors, one young couple and one old couple. Unfortunately our old neighbors passed away. So their child and her family moved in, let's call her Jo. Jo was instantly a pain. We had been sharing chickens with the previous neighbors and Jo agreed to keep sharing them. However on her nights she would constantly forget to put them away. So we would have to check them every night anyway. One night her little brats thought it would be funny to open our personal duck pen in the night. This leads to a mass slaughter and later the chickens went the same way. About two years ago there was a storm and one of her sequoias somehow fell over and died. They were understandably distraught but from then on the jealousy started. She would constantly complain about how lucky we were to have two sequoias in our garden and how our sequoia was making too much shade in their garden. It wasn't. Anyway we just thought it was Joe being a pain. Until we came back from our holiday in France. We find a huge 6 meter stump and nothing else. I mean how the heck do you get rid of a 100 feet tree in like 2 weeks? Two of our old British oak trees had been crushed as well. My mom and sisters were crying. 
My dad was red in the face and we had no evidence Joe had done it. She claimed that there had been a storm and she had to get rid of it. We had a security camera at the front of the house, but you can get in the back if you go through a few fields. We then were given an 8000 pound bill for damages to her property and to have the tree chopped up and removed. The wood alone would have been worth a small fortune. We had lost all hope and two weeks had passed when my dad came running in from the garden. We had put up a wildlife camera a few months ago and had caught everything. We got a lawyer on the phone and started our revenge. We got a tree surgeon out. He said it was an original specimen brought into the UK in 1860 along with the two that were in Elveston Castle Country Park. There were 218 around the UK but only 60 now. He also told us to call out an engineer because the roots might be in the foundation. So when they rot it could damage the house. It turns out that we would need to redo the foundations. Then we took Joe to court and sued them for damage to property, trespassing and lots of other smaller claims. It would cost 250k to have another sequoia that was 200 years put in and looked after. It's basically impossible. Plus the damage to the foundation which was 200k and the two oaks which were another 25k. So with the smaller claims it went to about 500,000 pounds. They had to move out. We have now paid off the mortgage and done a lovely loft and kitchen conversion and have basically done up the house and garden. We also planted a 60 year old sequoia tree in the back garden. And also had our kitchen counter and table made from the old sequoia. We now have a lovely family living next to us who we share chickens, ducks and pygmy goats with. They are very nice and I make a fortune babysitting their kids. The last story is called Hurricane Revenge. I lived briefly in Florida about a decade ago which is where I met my partner. It wasn't long after we met that we moved in together due to my not so great living situation. I was renting a room from a friend who was so addicted she could barely function and her enabler husband. We found a nice little two bedroom house that was owned by an elderly couple that lived just a few blocks away. Everything seemed okay. But we did find cockroaches after we moved in, which was quite shocking as I'm extremely clean and had never had roaches before. And when we told the landlords, they told us they were not roaches but palmetto bugs. Actually, they are the same thing. They refused to have an exterminator come in, at sign number one. Then a hurricane blew in. This was Florida after all. It was only a cat one or two, I don't really remember. But there was a substantial damage to the roof and a lot of water had gotten in. Being northerners we had no real idea how to prepare properly and the landlords just told us to lower the hurricane shutters. So that is all we did. It wasn't long after that we had mold growing on our walls, especially in the laundry room. We reported it to the landlords and they told us to just wash it down with bleach water. So we did and it came right back so it was a constant cleaning process. When we complained we were told that this was what life in Florida was like. They also came and took a look at the roof from the yard and told us, you two are strapping young men, you can go up there and fix it. Just let us know when you're done. Yeah, no. Then another hurricane blew through, again only a cat one or two, but this time we had windows broken during the storm. And since our roof was still not repaired or even tarped from the last storm, our carpets and furniture were soaked. Here comes the black mold again, but this time not only on our walls but on our carpets and furniture too. I spent the days outside with our dogs and we were sleeping in my partner's office. Our landlords again told us to just clean it up with bleach water and that the damage was our fault since we didn't prepare well and hadn't fixed the roof ourselves. So we called the city and had an inspector come by. He walked in and barked at what he found. Black mold all over the carpets and walls. The world population had a little boom and he could tell while looking at the roof that it was in need of repair prior to the storm. And it still hadn't been tarped. The best part is when I was standing at our open door with the inspector just inside. The old man came walking up talking about how we better have repaired the roof and how they were gonna charge us for all repairs and carpet replacements and mold removal yada yada yada. Cue the city worker who came around the corner and asked him if he was the owner. 
He said yes, and the inspector told him he was condemning the house because it was not habitable and that it was not our responsibility as tenants to make or pay for the repairs. He also recommended that we should be released from the lease. Never seen an old man wobble away so fast. Later that night, his wife called, raising high holy hell about how she was suing us for damages and how we are not getting back any money, blah blah blah. She also said she had removed the condemned danger signage that was placed on the door because it was embarrassing, people knew it was their property. But she made a mistake. She wrote us strongly worded letters about how we were taking advantage of the elderly. How all the damages were our fault since we didn't do any repairs. How she would not release us from the lease. And how many lawsuits she was going to hit us with. After contacting the inspector who saw our house and who took another trip to the house to replace the signage, we turned all of this in. He laughed and sighed and said he knew exactly how to handle it since he saw this all the time after hurricanes. If they actually sued, he would testify in our favor since what they were doing was highly illegal. He then told us he was going to pay them a little with it and make sure the letters got into the hands of the right people as well as how he had to replace the signs. Another thing she admitted in the letters. About a week later, we got a really pleasant call from the landlady. She was saying that we were such wonderful tenants. And how she was refunding our security deposit. And how she was graciously going to let us out of the lease and not pursue any charges or the rent for the last few months, which we had refused to pay since we could not live there. And if we needed help finding a new place to let her know. She would refer us to some of her friends who own property too. We did learn, cause we were watching the situation, that the house had to be gutted and completely remodeled. We actually parked up the road with some takeout and watched the crew haul out sheetwork and carpet. They could have saved themselves thousands if they had just called a roofer and someone to clean up the mold. But instead they made us call the city and have the house condemned and then do whatever they did to make them change their minds on everything else. I still wish I could have been there when they were confronted by inspectors the second time. The first was glorious. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. And please leave a comment with your favorite subreddit for future video ideas. Have a great day. Bye bye.